I've been really um, preparing for our 10th anniversary show here at Category mm-hmm. 5. Mm-hmm. And we've all been through this where, you know, you, you have trouble decluttering and organizing. And my biggest... Um, challenge here at the studio is as you saw today. Mm-hmm. So yeah, she, yeah, yeah. Shizu, um, I was explaining to her that you know you look at the boxes that we have of product that it has been sent in to review, and mm-hmm. and I know that there are some companies that are watching even right now who um, maybe don't understand when I've uh, unfortunately had to turn your products away um and this happens and this has happened you know more more regularly now than ever before so we've got boxes of stuff to review and then in come more boxes yeah while you're standing here yeah like yeah, pointing yeah. Case. now we've got more so so i unpack these boxes we review the product as as quickly as we can mm-hmm. and then we've got packaging we've got right, the original right, right. shipping packaging. Exactly, exactly i go through this where uh, we just you know, I'm not here enough to keep up right. with Right. So what happens to the items after you're done with them? Do you send them back or do they no. stay or you hold on to them? Or? They stay. Um, okay. So we, um, we quite often put them on display. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. For, for the companies that are promoting their products through us, we'll right. quite often bring them out again. Okay. And sometimes we'll even give them away as prizes. Wow. So that's ultimately the goal is to be able to oh, give them away. Oh, okay. I see. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. So in terms of segueing into this 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 book that I've read so is this the segue? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, so you know this is this is my predicament. Yeah, yeah. And Shizu contacted me and said you've got to check out this book. Mm-hmm. Tell us about this. Okay. Well, um, so the book is called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, and it's by author Marie Kondo. She's a Japanese declutterer. That's what she does for a living now. So this book this was a... This is her job. This is her job, wow. actually. And actually, there are now consultants all I over the fail. world. Yeah. <laughs> I would be fired first day. <laughs> yeah. No, you're pretty thorough. You'd, you, you'd get it. Um, so it's a, it was a, a New York Times bestseller, number one bestseller, uh, I think in and around the beginning of 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, so so this lady has a, her, so she's a declutterer slash cleaner, home organizer for, for a living. Um, she has a waiting list of three months of clients. Really? And the claim is that after tidying up the way she does it, you will never have to do it again. So it's not the kind of thing where you do it on a monthly basis, do it another six months, year. You do it once and it's done. So I'm not sure if that applies exactly to your scenario right. because you're constantly In an office, getting yeah, constant yeah. Mm-hmm. and I'm at not, home I can see it working. Yes, yes, at home definitely. So basically uh, I did this method this past Saturday. So I took 12 hours of my life out right. to uh, take my room apart and at the end of it I had 12 bags of like, 12 garbage bags sitting in my living room. Wow. Um, there was so much stuff. I had no idea myself that I was such a hoarder. Like I had so much stuff. And my way of cleaning up prior to this was just to organize stuff, you know, right. just put the clothes where the clothes were supposed to go, books where the books were supposed to go. That was the way I cleaned up. I always felt better afterwards. But this time was different. Um, so her method is different in one specific way, and that is um, she focuses, like the, the subtitle is actually decluttering and organizing. So the mm. first part is decluttering, and the rule that she goes by is to only keep things that spark joy. Interesting. So, okay. Yeah. So what that means is that if you have a shirt, say, that you wear once every three months and you have, maybe it doesn't fit quite right, but yeah. you, you kind of like it and you're like, you have mixed feelings, uh-huh. that one's got to go. Get rid of it. Yeah. Get rid I of it. I have shirts that I despise. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah. So there's going to be a range. There's going to be shirts that you absolutely d- despise. Mm-hmm. A shirt that maybe, you know, a relative gave to you 10 years ago that you're holding on to for memento's sake. Uh, there's going to be a shirt that you just bought last week that was expensive but didn't fit quite right. And then there's going to be that shirt that's going to be like, oh my gosh, I love this shirt. I right. love wearing it. It's It sparks joy. And... <laughs> <laughs> so this is the method you go through and it's very methodical you go through clothes first and then all the different types of clothing tops bottoms all that kind of thing uh, books and then papers which relates a little bit to technology in the sense that um, she basically says get rid of all paper except for two types one type is paper that you need to action on like let's say it's a government document that you need to send back like a bill or something yeah like that. something yeah. like that that you okay. need to action on and the second type um, 
is basically any kind of financial records that you absolutely have to keep. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, having a computer with a good Google Drive or, or whatever kind of technology is, is a great way of keeping your, your site paperless, aside from those types of documents. So would we start scanning things that... It like, Prob what's the answer? Probably not. I yeah. would say if she had like a suite to this this book in terms of translating that into a technology kind mm -hmm. of kind of field, she would probably keep that to a minimum as well. Because the idea is, is to have the least number of things on your mind, oh, letting so it's not going just of the past. Yeah, your room, but also like your mind and your life. Yeah. So that's okay. that's part of the results, which is. Um, so I'll, I will get back to you on on that question of what mm -hmm. you do with all of that stuff, well, right? Well, what, what comes to mind, um, Becca, you, you know, like we get tons and tons of papers from the, from the kids' teachers, schools. Yeah. And yeah. Like it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And every parent out there knows exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, Jeff? Is it... Yeah? Is it important to have the actual papers? Could you not just take a picture of them and like file them in like grade three? Like, this just have a file of, like, grade three pictures of things. I want to know your answer to this. Yeah, but yeah. we run into this predicament yeah. of these are sentimental in the way that our kids have done these crafts and even math homework and things that, you know, I'm so proud that my son got 100% on his math. Yeah. And so, you know, you want to hold on to that. What, you know, obviously you've got to go through it and you got and, and we recycle it and you mm -hmm, know, do our best mm -hmm. to, to get rid of it. But what's, what's kind of the answer there? Is so, there a magic answer? There, <laughs> yeah, I guess the answer should be magic. Um, this lady has been—it is, been, it's it, it is, it is it's exactly on the cover of the book, yeah. and I, I feel like having great words like magic on the cover of a book are, are great. But anyway, um, she's been doing this kind of work just as a side note since she was five years old. So she's been obsessed basically with really? home organization. She would throw out bags of stuff that belonged to her parents. Like she would go through the house and just organize things, but take time off of school to do these things. Correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. but this is her method. This is her method. Like yeah. she developed this yeah. method. She developed this method. And so one of the things that she did do at one point in time was like try to take pictures of the things that yeah. she found valuable. And so she's gone through all of these methods. And I think her answer would be, um, to that, does it spark joy? And if it does, like hold that. on to it, you know? Yeah. And if it doesn't, then, you know, you kind of, you know, you say goodbye, you know? And that's what the, the process was like for me when I was doing it was, you yeah. know, this, this old t-shirt they had had for about 10 years. I said goodbye to it. Literally, I had tears in my eyes because I was just like, this needs to go. It's yeah. not for me anymore. And I just <laughs> said goodbye. But those things that do spark joy, you hold on to them. That's interesting. And yeah. I like that And a lot of times with these kinds of philosophies or sayings or cliches mm -hmm. even yeah. there the opposite is true so in, in the opposite to that is things that bring sadness or mm -hmm. bad memories yeah. or yeah. you know those kinds of things they can just go exactly and that, and that's the interesting part about it is that it's very subjective um, it's because for example you might come across something that objectively came from someone that, let's say from a parent or someone that mm -hmm. you were close to at one time, but it causes you a lot of pain when you see it because it reminds you of something negative. For someone else, they might say, well, well, it comes from this person, so you should hold on to right. it. But for you personally, it's about how you feel about it. So right. if you feel this, it's a weight, you need to let it go. So it's, it's, it's an interesting process, and I found it for myself to be at points quite emotional. And once the process was done, um, I felt quite calm and more confident with my decision making because going through all of those things, hundreds of things of thinking to myself, does it spark joy? Does it, what emotion does this cause me? Do I have to let it go? All these things that were kind of caught up in my mind and in the past are now kind of physically gone. So. Mm -hmm. Um, so actually this book is interesting because the results are really interesting for her clients. Um, she's cited some clients have uh, gone through tremendous relationship changes afterwards, like for example, uh, separations for example, it, it can get pretty <laughs> severe, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but also uh, like career changes and people getting clarity about what they mm -hmm. want to do with their lives. So um, to me it makes sense, I'm only, you know, so far a few days into it, but I feel much more chill as a person oh, yeah? as a result. Yeah. Is yeah. there a part two to it? So you're decluttering the things that you already have, but have you changed the mindset for acquiring new things now? Are you only bringing into your life things yeah. that bring you joy? Well, definitely that's a good question because now I find when I go shopping or when I go around window shopping, I don't feel like I 
want to to buy anything because I'm I have that process in mind already like what is going to bring me joy and I already feel like I'm somewhat satisfied where I am I guess Mm -hmm. now the only thing is (laughs) just buying things that maybe (laughs) okay this is kind of embarrassing but so my (laughs) my collection of socks we'll say was not the best and so I had to throw out a bunch of them right so now now I have to get new ones essentially so these these are the kinds of things that you recognize that right. this old pair of sandals that I was wearing for the past like two years like they really needed to go and now I need to get a new pair so you're looking at things more in a long-term perspective and in, not in a perspective of oh you know I feel like just buying something right now right because you think oh no I'm gonna have to deal with that when I get home mm-hmm. so. yeah. hmm. Very cool. Well, we're talking about uh, the book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, with our guest Shizu Yamaguchi. And um, this book is actually available through our shop. It's cat5.tv slash tidy. (laughs) That'll get you there. Um, So how can we... Now, this is obviously good advice, and and it's something that I want to learn for... um, for my own life and for like at home and and Mm -hmm. just keeping things tidy and and getting rid of some junk Mm -hmm. but how can i translate this into um my office space my studio space um those at home who have home offices Mm it's another good example i know we've all got a lot of clutter that we could probably do away with and it would be so freeing to um i would say to to take the book and just go through the process with your home office yeah. i think that would be the method um i think by going through your papers and going through items such as things that are being sent in you would for yourself get a sense of what kinds of things you'll want to keep and what things right. you'll you'll put away or you know the categories of things i think will become more clear as you go through the process of what you already have so mm-hmm. i feel like kind of dealing with what you already have will make that path clear for the future as to what you want to bring in and keep and how you want to deal with that. So I would, I would highly recommend just going through the process. It takes some time, but it's, it's an all-in-one go kind of thing. So, uh, but I would recommend just doing the process with the book. Even just speaking with you right now, Shizu? Yeah. Just beyond you, I see three printers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm like, why, Robbie? <laughs> 